This demo is about how to use Word PLS to estimate minimum sample size requirements in an analysis and also to conduct a power analysis. So here's my model. And Let's assume I conducted the analysis and I want to find out if the sample size that I use for this analysis is enough. So when I look at this analysis here, if I go to view general results, I see that the sample size that I use for this analysis is 300, 300 rows of data. This analysis has various path coefficients. These three here are significant. This is also significant, but this variable is being included here as a control variable. So this path coefficient here is not relevant for the analysis. I just want to make sure that this side of the model is conducted controlling for this variable here. This is a non-significant path coefficient. So the minimum significant path coefficient in this model has an absolute path coefficient value of 0.37. I will go to explore statistical power and minimum sample size requirements. And I will enter the value of that path coefficient. That's 0.37. And I will, re I will get the software calculate two sample sizes, minimum required sample sizes, one using the inverse square root method, which tends to overestimate slightly the minimum required sample size, and the other calculated with the gamma exponential method, which provides a more accurate estimate. Uh, it's recommended that both be uh, reported in that users try to meet this one which is the most conservative one. So in order to conduct an analysis considering the significance level of 0.05 which is typ typical in a power level of 80% or 0.8 I need a minimum sample size of between 32 and 46 to achieve this level of power. I have a sample size that is actually 300, so that is more than enough. In fact, what I can do is start increases my power to say 85%, 95%, and 99%, which is the maximum that the software allows me to do. And I can see that even to achieve a power of 99%, that is, the probability that I would commit a false negative in my analysis would be uh, very very low. I would not commit that type of uh, mistake or type 2 error in 99% of the cases. Even if my sample size was in the neighborhood of uh, 100, so between 94 and 116 or higher, and this is because of the size of this coefficient. So my analysis with uh, 300 rows or a sample size of 300 actually gives me a power of greater than 99 percent. Now let's assume that I don't know that I'm doing an analysis and I don't know which is the uh, minimum uh, significant path coefficient, the absolute value of the minimum significant path coefficient in the model, excluding control variables. So what I can do is just make this uh, entry here, this field uh, empty, and then enter 
click enter and then the software will calculate recommended minimum required sample sizes now change the uh, power back to 80 percent and the software will use this value here 0.197 as the default value the rationale for this is in a publication that is referenced uh, in the user manual and this leads to minimum required sample sizes of between 146 and 160 or higher it's recommended that it be 160 or higher if a user does not know um, what is the, the uh, minimum uh, a significant path coefficient in the model. Now let's say that the user knows and it's based on past research so before doing the research the user uh, estimates or has makes uh, an informed guess that the minimum absolute significant path coefficient in the model will be 0.22. For significance level 0.05 to be used to test hypothesis and the power level of uh, 80%, this would lead to a minimum required sample size of between 115 and 128. So any number uh, equal to or greater than 128 is guaranteed to give me a power of uh, greater than 80% or 0.8 in my analysis. This concludes this demo on how to conduct a statistical power analysis and establish minimum sample size requirements for an analysis.